Shabbat Shalom to everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Um, every, every Sabbath we do things a little different. Um, today being in, in worship, I normally, what I'm about to do, I normally don't do in Facebook or in YouTube, but today I am going to do it because the Ruach HaKadash put it in my, in my spirit. There's a lot of times that we don't even know what to pray for. Amen. Sometimes we don't even know what to say. But the Ruach HaKadash says to all of us that don't worry so much what you're going to say. What you, I will put words in your mouth. So with that in mind, if you want to, you can read with me or you can just hear me. This is in Luke chapter 4. Verse number four. This is when Yeshua, um, he was in a synagogue. And nobody told him to, I, I guess, um, I guess he got up in, in a synagogue, which was on the Sabbath. And this is what Yeshua says in... And this is what he read. He read uh, Isaiah 64, 1. Luke 4. In, in Luke chapter 4, verse number... 18. Verse number 16. Oh, okay. Now this was, this was given to me by the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit. And he came, and he came unto Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And there was delivered unto him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah 61.1. And when he had opened the book or the scroll, he found the place where it was written. And this is what he gave me to read to all of you. The Spirit of Yahweh is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance unto the captives and recovering of the sight to the blind to set at liberty to them that are bruised and preach the acceptable year of Yahweh. Why he gave me this, I have no idea. But please, please receive it. Now, this is In the book of John, in the book of John, chapter 17, Yeshua is praying to the Father before Yeshua gets arrested. The whole chapter of, of John 17 is Yeshua's praying for his disciple then and he's praying for us today and this is what he said I'm not going to read the whole thing in John chapter 17 verse 1 these are, the, these are the words that spoke Yeshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said Father the hour, the hour has come glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify you and you have given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. So see, not everybody has eternal life, only those that Yahweh gives to Yeshua, so they will have eternal life. And this is the eternal life, that they might know you, the only true God, or Elohim, and Yeshua HaMashiach, whom you have sent. I have 
glorify you on the earth, I have finished the work which you have gave me to do. And now, O oh Abba, glorify you me with thy own self, with thy glory which I had before, before the world was. This is Yeshua speaking and he's praying to the Father. I have manifested your name unto the man which you gave me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them to me, and they kept thy word. See, on John chapter 17, verse 6, Yeshua says here, I have manifested your name, Father, unto the man which, unto the men which you gave me out of the world. Yahweh is for everybody. Amen. But not everybody is for Yahweh. Everybody, even, even atheists, know God. At least they know how to say God. But very few know the God of Israel. He sent, Yahweh sent his son for a purpose here on earth. And his own sons and daughters are today rejecting him. Verse 7. Now they have known that all things whatsoever you have given me are of the in other words everything that Yeshua had came from the Father. Amen. For I have given unto them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came from you, and they have believed that you did send me. Now, look at what he says on verse number 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. See, he doesn't pray for the world. I pray, for the, I pray not for the world, but for them which you have given me, for they are mine and they are yours. Verse 10, and all that are mine are yours, and, are, and all that are yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Yeshua came to this world, was, is the son of the living Elohim. He came to a world that is very materialized. He came to a world that constantly are plastic. But in that world that he came to is this world that we live in are his children that have been scattered. God is for everybody. But not everybody's ready for the God of Israel. What I'm speaking to you, it, it has not even been in my notes. He gave me this in worship. Listen very carefully what he says. He continues to pray. On, on, on John chapter 17... Verse number 11. Now this is, this is Yeshua. John 17, verse 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come unto thee, 
O Kadosh Abba, O Kadosh Father, keep through thy own name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. His children do not live by what they see. The children of the Most High live by faith. They do not, we do not keep our eyes on the things of the world. We keep our eyes on the things of heaven. Verse 12. Now, now look at what Yeshua says. Now he's praying. He's praying. Do you know what the word pray means? Do you have any idea what the, the power of prayer is? Prayer is your covenant connector of what is called power source. Prayer is the power you and I have in this earth. Yeshua said to his disciples, I have given you all the power, I have given you power over all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you because devils will be subject unto you. But don't get so excited if devils, they, they're subjects to you. You get excited because your name is written in heaven. Devils are going to be afraid of us. I'm sorry? They're going to be afraid of us. She's asking, are the devils afraid of us? They sure are. But that's when you have the anointing. That is when you have the Ruach HaKadash. That is when you're walking in the fire of Yahweh. That is when you're walking in the faith. Hallelujah. That is when you are walking constantly every day in the power of the Most High. And now you are going to be what is called a time bomb for the enemy. Yeshua said to his disciples, I have given you all the power over the enemy. And they are not even going to touch you. Amen. But don't get so high and mighty because the, the, the devils are subject to you. But get excited because your name is written in heaven. The devils came to Yeshua. And they trembled and they started shaking and baking when they knew that he was around, that the kingdom of heaven was around. They got close and they kneeled before him. And they said and they screamed out to Yeshua. Messiah, son of the living Elohim, have you come here now, in this time, to torment us before our time? What tormenting are you doing to devils? You can have a lot of the word. You can, you can read a lot of the Bible. You can go from Genesis to, to, to uh, 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 Revelation. But if that doesn't go inside of you, then, then you're nothing because, see, what you're reading is exactly the Ruach HaKadosh, the power of the Spirit of Yahweh. Have you come here, the devil said to Yeshua, to torment us? Now this is a man that was possessed by a legion of de demons. See, we look in the Bible and we think there is all in the Bible and now today we are do not get possessed. And who told you this lie from the pit of hell? Who told you this? <laughs> the spiritual world, whether it's Yahweh's spiritual world or Satan's spiritual world, governs the natural world. 
And we need to, we as, as human beings, surrender to either one side of the fence or the other. Because the spiritual world is stronger, is mightier, whether it's evil, whether it's good, it's mightier. And Yahweh is even greater. It's, he is the creme of the creme. He is the power. He is the great I am. What I am speaking to you today is not even in my, it's, it's not even what I wrote. When you receive the word of the Most High, you can call it whatever you want. You can call it Hebrew roots. You can call it the Torah. You can call it the commandments. You can call it the gospel. You can call it the truth. You can call it the Bible. You can call it whatever you want. It's a God inside of you. This is why Yeshua in the book of John chapter 17 says, Not only do I pray for these that are here right now, my disciples, but I pray for those that you will give me. Because the world is called temptation. The world is called religion. The world is called material. The world is called electronics. Yeshua said, not only do I pray. See, the, see the, there's not a lot of prayer doing today in his own children. Not only do I pray for these that are here now, but I'm praying for those that you don't take them out of the world. So-called Christian says, well, oh, because we're going on a rapture. Really, he says, don't take them out of the world. But look at, look at, look at what he says on verse 15. John chapter 17, verse 15, he says, verse 14, I have given them thy word. And the, and the world has hated them. I have given them thy the word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. Verse 15. Now look at what he said. Chapter what? John 17, 15. I pray not, I pray not. Look at this. I pray not that you should take them out of the world in the so-called rapture. But that you should keep them from the evil one. Wow. Wow. I pray now that you should take them out of the world. But that you should keep them from the evil one. Yes, sister. Um, in chapter uh, ch uh, chapter yeah. eleven, yeah. Uh, seventeen eleven. Yeah. I don't understand this when he says, uh, "Holy Father, keep through thine own name that, that who." You mean in verse eleven? I already read that before you came, but I'll read it again for you. Do you want me to read it again for you? Well, I, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me. That they may be one as we are. That's the fact. That they may you don't be, understand that. They may be one as we are. I don't understand that. Okay, she doesn't understand what I just read on John 17, verse 5, 17, verse 11. Yeah. Let me read it again. Okay. Because Yeshua in this, in this chapter is praying, communicating, connecting with the power source. And the power source is called Yahweh. It's called His Father. It's called Heaven. And it says on verse 11, And now I am no more in the world. Even though Yeshua was not crucified yet. I'm sorry. Yeshua already knew that he was going to leave. Speak those things that are not as though they 
it says, I know I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. These. Who are these? We. You and I and the disciples. <laughs> you and I and the disciples. Yes. But these are not in the world, and I am coming to you. See, now before he says, I'm not in the world, now he says, I'm coming to you. See, because when you go into prayer, you are not in this. And then when you're praying, you're praying with power to Yahweh. You're connecting with a power source of life. Wow. This is the power that you have. But how much are you praying? And he doesn't want repeated prayer, by the way. We do Shema because it's, it's a fun. But after you do Shema, then you have to. Okay, not repeated prayer. I'm not. I read, every Shabbat I come here, I don't speak to you the same thing. What is repeated prayer? What is repeated prayer? Asking for the same thing all the time? Well, we got the old father. Remember our father? Uh -huh. Well, that's repeated prayer. No, it's not. Hail Mary for grace. Hail Mary for our grace. Yes, that's repeat a prayer. No, but it's not. Now it is. Okay, let, hold on one second. That's Catholicism. Yeah. We don't we don't teach Catholicism here. Okay. Catholicism, they do pray. They chant. Yeah, chant. Yeah. Our Father, which art in heaven, thy kingdom come. The our Father's prayer, Yeshua says, this is the way you should pray. But that prayer has an anointing, has a reason. Let's suppose, I'm going to give you an example of our Father. Want me to give you an example? Mm -hmm. Our Father, which are thou in heaven. <coughs> Look at this, just our Father, which are in heaven. Then you take our Father, which are in heaven, and says, Father, I know that you are the creator of heaven and earth. Abba Kadosh, I know Abba Kadosh that you gave me life, that you gave Yeshua. You begin to talk to him through our Father. Just the first verse. Abba Kadosh, you are the great I am. You are, you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. There's nobody looking. Our Father, because you are our Father. Hallelujah. And what does it mean, our Father? It's talking about all Israel. It's talking about Christianity. That when we go into prayer, we don't say my father. We say our father. Daniel, when he prayed, he did not say, oh, my sins. No, no, no. He says, oh, father, forgive us for we have sinned. Israel has sinned against you. Forgive us, Abacadon. Forgive us. That's where the one comes in. Yes. Because we are one. We are, and when you pray, oh, Father, help me. Oh, and you do. I'm not saying you're not supposed to, but when you say our, your selflessness, you're unselfish. Mm -hmm. You become one. We are one. Right. Yahweh, Yeshua, and the Father are one. We are one. Mm -hmm. That prayer is in the Bible. Because do you know where it is? Yeah. I'll show you in a second. Because when you are walking as one, there's no hypocrisy. There's no condemnation towards your brother. There's no, what do you call when you, racism. There's no colors. There's no, you just one with him. Oh, because, you know, he's fat or, or, or she's skinny or they got brown eyes and blue eyes and brown, blonde hair and, and this and that. No! What you're seeing is a human being. What you're seeing is a child of the Most High. And you begin to walk as one. <laughs> Listen very carefully in verse number 15. I'm sorry. And it says... Um, and now I am no more, verse 11, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. I come unto thee, O Holy Father. Give through thy own name those whom you have given me, that they might be one as we are one. Verse 16. They 
are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. So we're supposed to pray not for ourselves, but for everybody. Everybody. Everybody here. See, okay. well, that's a good question. She says that we're supposed to pray. We, we pray for ourselves, but normally when we pray for everybody, somebody's praying for you. Because this is the way it works. But see, if you're not using prayer in your life, then what are you using? Because really, prayer is coming before him with your heart. With his word. We need. What about praying for the enemy? Okay, in a second. You will pray for everybody, even your enemy. You pray for everybody, even your enemy. Because those who are your enemy, they're more lost than you are. Those who are your enemy, they're, they're consulting with voodoo witchcraft. They're consulting with people that are worse than they are. Okay? So you need to pray for them. When you when you when I hear an amber alert, when I hear an amber alert, let me tell you the first thing I do as soon as I hear it, I begin to pray for that child. I begin to pray that there's eleven percent angels protect that protect that child of Akadosh. Hallelujah, may you save them. I begin to pray to intercede. Where is the prayer of his own children today? And this is not even my message. Are you receiving this? Yes. And I hope you do because this was given to me by the Ruach HaKadosh. But for the grace, Hallelujah. But for the grace of God, there go I. Excuse me? But for the grace of God, there go I. There's no I? No, 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 no. But for the grace. But for the grace of God. Of, gra of God, there go I. Meaning that that person is in your shoes. Yes. Doing the same thing that you used to do. And you're glad that you're not doing it. Exactly. We don't live. Let me tell you this. We're getting ready. He's preparing us to go home whenever that is. And really what he's preparing is our souls. Let me ask you a question. Do you live more in the flesh or do you live in the spirit? Oh, you really don't know, you really don't care, what is it, the difference, you get this and that. It doesn't matter because, you know, when I'm almost going to die, I'll ask him to forgive me, and he'll forgive me, and I'll go to him. Really? Uh -huh. That that was a liar. And he actually, whoever speaks like this is speaking through the, through the tongue of Satan. Oh, Maria, that's too much. Yeshua said in, in prayer, I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them, protect them, guard them from the evil one. Do, do you believe that evil exists in the world? Yes. Definitely. If it exists in us, it exists in the world. You know why? Because the worst thing we have in our body is our tongue. The tongue is a world of its own. With it, we bless Yahweh, and with it, we curse, we curse men we curse our that are made in his image. Wow. Fountains of water, salt water, and, 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 and sweet water cannot come from the same mouth. And then we go and we brush our teeth with toothpaste. <laughs> and we begin to say, the Bible says, yeah. And the Bible says, and the Bible says, but do you do and obey what the word says? Many Christians are going into Middle Eastern philosophy, religion. Yeah. Yoga, meditation. And I'm not making fun of anybody. Do you know what that is? It's called philosophy of men. I'm not saying it doesn't work. It sure works. It's your works. It really works. It works. 
But what's behind that? What is behind that? What is behind that? I heard somebody the other day that he's into meditation. He's a very famous photographer for, uh, I don't know what, what he, anyway, he's very famous. And he goes, this is the ending on what he says. He says, I do, I do yoga. And I open my mind and whatever spirit comes, I don't care because it feels good. I wish I remember his name. A spiritual world governs the natural world. And Satan is behind false religion. And it looks so beautiful and it looks so nice. Now, what do you think we need today in the body of Messiah? We need revival. Yes or no? We need revival. We need to start walking by faith. Faith is a spirit. Revival is a spirit. It's fire. It's fire from Yahweh. It's His, it's his Holy Spirit. It's Ruach HaKadosh. How do you get when you have to hear the word? How do you get when you have to go in prayer? How do you get when you need to talk to Yahweh, how do you get, how do you get, do you get excited? Or do you just say, hum, 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 hum. If you do, then we need revival. Most Christians are leaving church because there's no anointing. There's no fire. There's no love. They're leaving church. Where are they going? Who is calling them? And then we, and please, I am not here to come against anybody. Speaking the truth, if you don't like it, you can leave. I, 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 will, I will respect that. Then we got a lot of Messianics calling themselves Messianic Jews. Where is the love? Not too long ago, a couple of years ago, one called here and told my husband, my husband was telling him that he lost the wallet and he said to him, a messianic Jew, a messianic. I did not call you for you to talk about my, your, my your problem. I, t I call you so you can motivate me. So your wife can motivate me with her words. Where's the love there? And then when, when we see things, we don't want to talk about it. But that's the problem. There is a cancer that is going around, and I really mean a cancer, spiritually cancer, in the body of Messiah. And what are we doing? We're putting the Ruach HaKadosh, the Spirit of the Most High, in the back burner. I'm going to continue here, but let me tell you what I got. Because I feel, I'm telling you right now, I feel that I am, an, 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 and I'm please, I'm not making this up. Whether you believe me or not, that's, that's irrelevant to me. But I feel really, really in the anointing. And when I feel like this, let me tell you, he comes to cut heads, especially demonic heads. Because there's too much panky and panky in the body of Messiah. Matthew chapter 13, and I'll come back to this one. Matthew chapter 13. What is going on in the body of Messiah? Where is the order? Where is the anointing? Where is the deliverance? Where is the healing? Where is the word, hallelujah, that's coming out of your mouth like a, like a sword, hallelujah, with two edges? See, this is the part that most of us don't like. Because he's coming, what? He's coming and he's speaking it. It isn't me. He is speaking and he's telling us. He begins to what? To discipline us. We don't like.
don't like it. But see, if he doesn't discipline us, that means he doesn't love us. Amen. A father or a mother that doesn't discipline his ch their children, they don't love them. They don't love them. Look at what it says in Matthew 13, verse number 24. Before I read this to you, you must understand that the wheat, the wheat are his children, and the tares of, of Satan are growing together. Look at what it says. Now, this is Yeshua speaking. It's a parable. Verse 24, another parable forth unto and saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sow good seed in the field. But when man slept, the word here slept means spiritual sleepiness. You don't feel like look, listen to the word. You're spiritually asleep. His enemy, now his enemy is talking about Satan, came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said, the servants of his angels, and said unto him, Sir, that now you sow good seed in the field? The field is the world. From whence then these tares came? Where, where does these tares came? In other words, the weeds. Mm -hmm. Verse 28. And he said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servants, which are his angels, said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? <laughs> He's talking about the wheat, not the, not the tares. Okay, now look at what Yeshua said. Now this is a parable. On verse 29. But he said, nay or no, lest while we gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Mm -hmm. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, angels, Gather you together first the tares and bind them in the bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Let me explain that to you. Would you like me to explain that to you? Yeah, what's, what's yes. the barn? Yes. Get ready for this. Okay. Here on verse number 30, where it says, Let both. Grow together until the harvest. The harvest is speaking about when Yeshua comes back. Is talking about um, the fullness of the nations. Amen. Yeshua is sending his spirit right now as we speak to the world. It says it in the book of, 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 uh, of Joel. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit. Some will prophesy. Some will have dream. And some will have vision. Now, this pouring of the spirit, of the Ruach HaKadosh, of the Holy Spirit, is not for everybody. It's only for the wheat. And the wheat are leaving this to go and be with the tares. They're rejecting the word of the eternal. They are rejecting him. In the book of Hosea, it says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. You have rejected my knowledge, my Torah, my divine instruction. I will reject from you being priests. Because we are, we are, we, <laughs> he's making us priests. So you don't teach my Torah. Wow. 
You're denying the most high to go and what? And play patty cake with Satan's little elves? <laughs> The prince of the power of the air, Hasatan, is going to and from the earth seeking who he may devour. And let me ask you this. He doesn't, devour, he doesn't care about the world because the world's in his hand. What he wants to devour is the children of the Most High. Because the first thing Hasatan takes, what does he do? He steals. And at the time of the harvest, when the fullness of the Gentiles, the fullness of the nations, that right now Yeshua is sending his Ruach HaKadet to gather his wheat, his elect. He, Yeshua, is calling, the, the good shepherd, is calling his sheep by their name. And they are, they are hearing his voice because they recognize the good shepherd. And what is, what, is the, what is the sheep doing? They're running to him. Because the sheep, Yahshua's sheep, have been with the wrong shepherds, with the wrong pastors. The reason that evil has really risen, it is because it is a prophecy. Do you want to see it? And put your, put your fingers there and we'll come back to this. Okay. No, we don't come back to this. Psalms 92. Amen. It says on, on Psalms 92, verse number 7. When the wicked springs as the grass, and when all workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. And what his children, Yahweh's children are doing, they're mingling and they're working and they're doing what the world is doing because the blind follows the blind. And they both will fall into the ditch. Yeshua said, Behold, I have given you power over the enemy, and nothing shall mean, shall hurt you. How are you walking? Are you walking by faith or what you see? Nevertheless, do not rejoice that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. You can look it up anytime you want to. Luke chapter 10, verse, verse number 20. Revival is needed. The fire of the Most High is needed. So there can be repentance. So there can be salvation. So there can be deliverance. So there can be blessings. So there can be, so there can be power. Because see, when you sing, it's contagious. When you, when you smile, it's contagious. When you go to a ballpark, when you go and you start singing, go team, go team. Even though you know, I went to a baseball the cops one time, and I, I, I don't follow that, but I just wanted to be one. And I said, go team, go team. And I started yelling and eating, and eating hot dogs and hey, okay, and all this stuff. <laughs> Guess what happened? Everybody joined along. Because I was joining along with them. Because it is contagious. And it takes one match to be lit. It takes one match to be lit. It is the match. It is the it is the fire of the uh, the anointing of the Ruach Hakadosh to ignite you inside and go into the forest, and the forest begins to be in a blaze, in flames. That is what, symbolically speaking, that is what revival is. It's purification. Excuse me. Pur pur purification. Yes. When do we need revival? We get so excited when there's fireworks. Woo, look at the fireworks. Look how pretty. Look at that. Woo, 
But what are the, the fireworks inside of you? Is there fireworks inside of you when you hear the word? Do you get excited when you, come, when you have to come to hear the word? If, when you go to the church you go to, do you get excited? Do you get excited? Then you need revival. You need revival when we don't love Yahweh the way we used to. We need revival when the earthly interests or the world interests and occupation are more important than eternal ones. Eternal ones. We need revival when we rather watch TV and read secular books and magazines mm -hmm. than read the Bible and pray. We need revival when you are entertained by things that you once you grieved. We need revival when you eat, when you used to eat kosher and no more you don't eat kosher. There's a reason why. We need revival when you are now silenced when you used to speak. We need revival when your prayer closet has cobwebs and your, and your Bible is dusty. We need revival when you excuse sin. It's a, see, oh, I made a mistake. Children make mistakes. When we do something that is against Yahweh, we sin. We need revival when you're looking for that dislike button on this, on this message. I don't like what you're saying. Well, just, you can, you can, you can shut it off and you can leave. We need revival when you have a deep sense there is something more. Do you all agree with me? Amen. But this to me is the doozy one. You want to hear what it is? You want to hear the, the creme of the creme? Why we need revival? We need revival when there is not the anointing of the Holy Spirit in a church. See, when I say this, we're constantly, we, we think about the building. No, I'm talking about you, because you are the church. Say that again. The, body. the church temple. We need revival when there is no Holy Spirit, power of the Holy Spirit, of the Ruach HaKadosh, in the church. And we think automatically it's the building. No, yeah. it's you. Yeah, true. When the church, you and I are the church. When the church does not have the Holy Spirit, that's when we need revival. Are you a candidate for this? If you answer, if you answer any of these, you're right, I have done this, then you need revival. Then this message is for you. The time to grow is now. Life is like a food. Life is like a food processor. Your life gets possessed, upside processed every from every new experience. Yep. One thing I know is this: that Yahweh does not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The only ones that change is us, because we are looking a lot of times for answers in the wrong places. That person that you drink with, your drinking buddy, the one that you smoke cigars or whatever it is that you smoke, or the one that you constantly are swearing, how is their life? Or marijuana? How, how are they living? How can you associate yourself constantly, constantly with this person? And then you have the audacity to speak the word, the name of Yahweh? No, callate la boca. You should be embarrassed of yourself. This is where he says, do not say my name in vain. Because people will hear you and look at the way you're living. It is a lifestyle. You can have revival in yourself. And you, it says in the Bible, that we don't walk by what we see. We walk by faith. Obedience. For your information... In the kingdom of Yahweh, in the kingdom of heaven, there are wheat and there are, there are tares. You right now probably are with a friend of a tear. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. 
You probably are walking quick. Because I'm telling you, I, I'm telling you, me, I know who my, I know who next to me there are the tears. You're hanging out with tears. Or You're hanging or around with tears. Or co-workers are tears. Could be a co-worker, family, it doesn't matter. What, see, stop looking at people and look at you. What needs to change in you? Oh, well, my mom does this, and my daughter does this, and this one did that. What about you? Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eyes, and don't you look at the, at the tree that's in yours? First, take away the beam or the tree that's inside your eye, and then you can go and take the speck out of your brother's eye. True. You hypocrites. Yeah. Hypocrites. Yeshua says, I have given you all the power over the enemy, over Satan. We have victory because he has given it to, 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 to us. All our victories over Satan are obtained by the power derived from the Father who gives it to his son, Yeshua HaMashiach, who gives the power to the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, who gives his power to us. You have the power to shine. You have the power to heal. You have the power over all the power of the enemy. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Elohim, of God. Not hearing the word of man. Not hearing philosophies of man. Not hearing religion. Hearing the word of the eternal Elohim, Yahweh Sabaoth. That is the only way that faith comes. It comes by hearing. And he will give you ear so you can hear the Ruha, the spirit of Yahweh. You have the power to overcome whatever obstacle you are in right now. You even got the power over the tears, your enemies. If you are Kadosh, holy, you should not fear. What is next to you? What are you fearing? Yahweh did not give you a spirit of fear. He gave you a spirit of power. A spirit of love and sun mind. Amen. Thank you, Father. Got to take this off. I'm super hot. The reason that the Son of Elohim appears to destroy the works of Hasatan But if you are not meditating in his word, what are you meditating on? And I'm speaking to you believers. Well, I belong in this church, and I belong in that church, and I belong in the Messianic temple, and I belong in this, and I belong in that, and I belong. But what about the, I belong to Yahweh, the king of the universe? Yeshua is our pastor, our shepherd, and we will not lack. Is something hurting you right now? Is something hurting you right now? Just say yes or no. 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 And I'm not talking about here now. I'm talking about your life. No. No. Then you need to ignite that power inside of you. Ignite. I'm going to show you. I'm going to, I'm going to demonstrate. I'm going to ignite. Paul said to Timothy, because Timothy was shaking and baking because he was scared. And he was talking. Paul was a very learned man. And Paul said to Timothy, what is it that you fear? Because they're talking about you? Because they're screaming at you? Because you don't talk like that? He's, he's telling Timothy, ignite, turn on the fire that is inside of you. The joy that you have, the world did not give it to you. The world cannot take it away. Only if you give it to them. Please go with me. Look at what Yeshua is saying here. Uh, Luke 10. Luke 10. Verse 19 and 20. Luke 10, verse 19 and 20. Do you know why I talk like this? We gotta hear it. Excuse me? Because we need to hear it. <laughs> The sister said, because we, get, we need to hear it. You're right. We just say 18 and 19 and 20. Luke chapter 10, verse 19 and 20. Now listen wow. to this. 
I speak like this because what Yeshua has been in my life. Any time the enemy knows that you are the son or daughter of the Most High, he will send a force of demons against you. It can be through religion, it can be it can be through philosophy, it can be through science, it can be through it can be through whatever. Yeah. Through whatever. But look at what Yeshua is telling his disciples here. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19. I'm sorry, verse 18. And he said unto them, and he's telling you, Behold, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power to thread upon serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Are you with me? Amen. So what is it that you're afraid of? See, your fire is being ignited right now. Mm. No, I believe this. And look at what Yeshua said in verse number 20. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. But rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. You got the power. What are you doing with it? Ignite that power. Now. Spirits, demons, are subject to you. Amen. The word subject means that, that, that means that they are under your authority. That means that you control them. When you are walking in the fire and the, and the revival and the Ruach HaKadosh of Yahweh Sabaoth. And then you can really say, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. But every tongue that confesses will, will be condemned on judgment day. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge of the Torah. Torah, divine instructions. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not my worst stands. On your mark, get set, grow. What does that mean? On your mark, with the spirit of Yahweh in you. Get set with faith. Grow spiritually. What the enemy is more scared of is when you are anointed. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> he trembles just like the demons in the time when Yeshua was here. Did you come here to torment that? Because when you are anointed, when you are in revival, when you are walking in the Ruach HaKadosh, you're walking in fire. And they don't like it. Because they will get burned. What kind of fire do you possess inside of you? A little fire? Maybe just a little speck? Oh, tremendous. Well, I believe this message after we're done is going to be tremendous. Don't you agree with me? Amen. What the enemy is scared most is when somebody is anointed with the fire spirit of Yahweh. When you decide to walk with Yahweh. When you decide to walk with Yahweh. What the enemy was going to do is send his tares against you. And the tares are people that are talking to you that are in the, they used to be in this and they're in the world. Why are you going there? Why do you read the Bible? Why are, I'll get you to say, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Haven't you noticed they're very whiners? They're whiners. Just like, just like Charlie Brown and the teacher. Foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Did you start it with Yahweh? Through the spirit? Or did you start it through the flesh? Did you ask, when you got saved, did you do it through the flesh or did you do it through the spirit? So who has bewitched you? Who's talking lies to you? Yes, sister. Okay, so I'm listening to this message. 
I'm getting ignited. I know I got to ignite the fire in me. Does that mean I walk out the door and tomorrow all these tears, they're all, they're at the door knocking, trying to get in and every, you know, like they're more than ever. They're not, you know, they're trying to. You, you have a question. You're she asking me a question. question. She's asking a question that right now she's anointed. She's got the fire. And right tomorrow when she leaves, when she goes to work and all this, are the tears going to come against you? Is that what it is? Are they all showing up even more so than ever? That's my question. While you live, and I'm going to answer that. I'm asking this question right now. While you live in this truth, there's going to be missiles of demons coming against you. So don't think just because you do. It doesn't matter. The bigger the anointing you have, the bigger the demon. They don't give us a the bigger, The bigger the enemy. But Yeshua is saying here, Behold, I give you power to thread upon the serpents and the scorpions over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Did I answer that question? See, for you to walk like this, you literally have to walk by faith, not by sight. You have to keep your eyes in heaven, not on the earth. You have to keep yourself and you have to look more what's inside of you than what's outside of you. Because Satan is outside of you. He does it through Christmas and gathering and, 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 the, and the lights and all this, this, this whatever. And then we get excited and, and then we do the Macarena and you know we do all this stuff. And what happens is we took our eyes off who he is that's inside of us. And when we take our eyes from him, we put our eyes on the things of the outside of what we see. And we are not children that walk by what we see. We are children that walk by faith. If you ignore those uh, demons that come out at you. Is that good to ignore them or just to face them and say, get out of here? Okay, she's saying that if, 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 if when you start walking like this to ignore those, those demons, well, I'm going to tell you this from my own, from my own experience. Mm -hmm. Demonic forces will even come during when you're sleeping. Right. That's right. Yeah. But the problem is not when they come. The problem is your, your, your lifestyle. The more you go away from the light, the more darkness comes in. And, and, and if you don't have too much of the light, which is the fire, how can you overcome that? What I do is, they come, okay, they come from any direction. They come with, with my family, they come with this, whatever. They come with food, that doesn't matter. You know what I do? I begin talking the word. They can't stand it, it bothers them. And I began talking to her. And I began, and let me tell you, when I began to speak the word, the word, the word, there's this anointing and power that comes upon me. And in the moment I say, leave in the name of Yeshua, it happens. Because this will happen. Yeshua was even in the cross. When he was being, when we was crucified, even Satan said, if you are the son of man, come down, come down. <laughs> wow. And Yeshua said, forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they're doing. You cannot do it your way. We cannot do it our way. We got to do it his way. And his way is the word because faith comes from, faith comes from the word. Faith does not come. Let me tell you this. Faith is one of the, the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. You need to ignite what He has given you. And no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Because until you start walking that way, how will you understand who is Israel? What is the two houses? What is a uh, um, <laughs> replacement theology? The most of you probably don't even know what I'm talking about. How can I bring you a message of that when right now you're what? You don't even know what that is. The devil is a liar. 
and Yeshua is still the Messiah, sitting on the right hand of the Father, interceding for us, because he is our high priest. Amen. Amen. And without a doubt, I know the Messiah is coming very soon. Amen. Do you believe this? Yes. yes. It's in very common. Demons, tears, believe God that is one, but they also begin to tremble because they know that he is who he says he is, and there's no other God besides him. Hare Krishna did not die for you. Buddha did not die for you. And I'm not, eh, eh? Allah did not die for you. There's one Elohim, one, one Yahweh, one, one, one creator. Well, there's many ways that you can go to salvation, to God, that you can go through God. Well, I don't know what God you're using, but I can tell you there's only one. And his name is Yahweh Sabaoth, creator of heaven and earth. He's the father of Yeshua HaMashiach who sent it so we can be saved. Saved from what? <laughs> when we left him, we <laughs> sinned against him. We sinned, we broke his commandment, we broke his rules, we broke his laws, we broke it. The law doesn't save anybody. So don't think just because you do the law, oh, the law, the law, the law, it's going to save you. No. The law just tells you how to live in this world. That's it, that we don't belong to. Please receive all this because this is coming from the Ruach Kadesh. Only certain people will Yahweh give them the spirit of the Ruach HaKadosh. How do you grow spiritually? You grow spiritually through faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of Yahweh. To live by faith, obedience, you must live your life from inside out. Not from outside in. What are we talking about? Because we live what we, what we don't see. When you live your life as a believer from, the, from inside, from outside in, you're not gonna, it's not going to happen. Because your body is the temple of the Ruach HaKadosh. What are you doing with your temple? That he does not approve of. Who are you mingling with? We are, we are always of good courage. We have good courage. Because Paul says, we know that while we are at home, talking about our body, we are away from Yahweh. Because we walk by faith, not by sight. Let's go there. 1 Corinthians 5.7 I have so much to tell you, but you're not ready. See, you, I, I, I should be giving you like really solid food, like really like porterhouse steak with a bone and you should eat the bone and everything. But you're not ready. Because you should be, to this time, since you've been a believer, you should be teaching people. And right now you still need people to teach you. Because you're still on, on formula. And I have so much to tell you, but I cannot tell you until I come back and bring you the what? The basic things of the word, which is the most powerful thing, which is, you know what? The anointing, the prayer, prayer, prayer. You know why demons work together? Because in witchcraft, they chant and they call evil spirits. What do you mean prayer? Come on, you know. Hey, Father, thank you for the food that I'm about. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Demons work together. Are you working together with other believers? Because believers is like a team, like a baseball team, a basketball team, or a football team. When you are in a team, you don't look at everybody. You look at one. Yes or no? 
A team helps each other. Look at what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 7. Second or first? Phew, first. I'm sorry, second. I'm sorry. My fault. My fault. Second. My fault. Second Corinthians chapter 5 or 7. Oh, yeah, yeah. So then, I don't think. Uh, yeah, that's it. So for we work by faith, not by sight. For we walk by faith, not by sight. By sight. Bef what came first, the spirit or the flesh? The spirit. The spirit. So what do you have to focus more? Spirit. So why most of his most of his children focus more on the flesh? You know why? Because they're sleeping. Before you are in the flesh, you are spiritually first. How can I say this? Because before you become in the flesh. Spirit is in the blood. Everything we see physically was in the spirit first. Your house, your chair, trees, human, animals, material. Air is not physical but spiritual because we don't see it. But then air has what is called oxygen and gives us life. How often do we really focus on oxygen or, 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 or the air we breathe? Hardly never. When you start focusing on the things inside of you, that's what the power is inside of you, not outside of you. Oh, I got that, and I don't have a house, and 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 look at and look at my and look at my 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 job, and look at this, and look at this woman, and look at that. You're you're really not walking in. You're really not walking by faith. Those people are controlling your life. There is more power in the things you don't see, spiritual, than the things you do see in the, in the material world. Walk by faith requires that we turn our hearts to the voice of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, and to the truth of the Word. We choose to leave, live according to what Elohim reveals to us, rather than trust our own understanding. It says in the book of Proverbs, trust in Yahweh with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will straight, straighten your path. You cannot straighten what Yahweh has made crooked. That is impossible. Judas was born and Yahweh made him crooked. And you and I cannot make him straight. And that's just the way it is. When you have a mustard seed faith, nothing will be impossible for you. Do you want power in your life? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Well, of course, Maria. Come on. I want power. If you want power in your life, you need to live your life from inside out, not from outside in. When you live your life from outside in, you are, you are, what, do you know what is called the Bible? You are in poor in the spirit. Poor in the spirit is called bankruptcy. Your giant inside of you is not outside, but inside of you. You are the genie of your own lamp, which means the genie of your own life. You can create miracles. The fountain of life is inside of you, not outside of you. Your prosperity is inside of you. Your healing is inside of you. The Ruha HaKadosh. The, the anointing is inside of you. Repentance, salvation, redemption, and revival is inside of you. The Apostle Paul reminds his readers that followers of the Messiah must not build their lives around things that have no eternal significance. Significance. 
Listen very carefully to this. This is what Paul was saying to in the, in the, in, in, to the church at Corinth. Corinth. Even though our physical body is gradually decaying, because look at yourself in the mirror. You've got a lot of wrinkles. Yeah. You're drying up. You're, we are decaying, yeah. even before we die. Thank you. Okay? You don't want to hear this, but it's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Yet our spiritual, our spiritual being, what's inside of us, is renewed day by day. What we see lasts only for a time. It's, it's temporal. But what but what can what we don't see lasts forever. As long as we are at home in the body, this is us right now, we are away from Yahweh's home, eternity. We live by faith and not by sight. We are conf uh, confident to prefer to leave our home here, right here, in our body, in the body, and be, at, and, and be with home with Yahweh more than anything. We want to please Yahweh, whether it's in our home here, which is, means our earthly body, or there in the spirit. For all of us must appear before Messiah to be judged by him. We will each receive what we deserve according to everything we have done, whether it be good or whether it be dead. Do you, uh, or whether it be bad. Do you want to see it in the Bible, that, what I'm reading? 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, mm -hmm. verse 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, in other words, the body, yet the spiritual man is renewed day by day. Mm -hmm. Verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen. See, we don't look at the things that are seen. But at the things which are not seen, the spiritual world, for the things which are seen are temporarily, but the things which are not seen are eternal. That is true. That is so true. That's true. Chapter 5, verse 4. <laughs> For we that are in this tabernacle, it's talking about our body, we are crying. Are we crying? We're crying. Being burned, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon them morally might be swallowed up by life. Now he that has wrought us for the uh, self-same thing is Elohim, who also has given us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always conf confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from Yahweh. In other words, while we live in this body, even though it has the spirit, we are away from Yahweh. And what our spirit is, is crying to, to be at home with Yahweh, which is also a spirit. For we walk not by faith, but by sight. We are confident, I say, willing rather than be absent from the body and be present with Yahweh. Wherefore we labor that whether we're present or absent, we may be, we may be accepted of him. Now that we want to please him. Whether our spirit is here now in this body or when, when it goes to him. We want to please him. We want to obey him. <laughs> Listen very carefully. Everyone is, is seeking happiness. Yeah. There's not one person that doesn't want happiness. But the nature of, love, of life is that we need to realize that we cannot find that happiness within ourselves. If we don't find that happiness inside ourselves, we will never find it. Everyone is seeking happiness. But Everybody's seeking happiness. But the nature of life Is that we realize that if we cannot find that happiness within ourselves, 
then we will never find happiness. No? I don't get it. In other words, if you're living for somebody to make you happy, it's not going to work. No. You have to make yourself happy. Everyone is seeking happiness. You have to find it within yourself. Yes. The happiness no. is that you find is in yourself. True. Okay? And when you constantly are, are, are blaming others because of your misery, then you're, you will never be happy because the happiness comes within yourself, not outside of yourself. We live and we seek happiness living for love and connection with others and others loving and connecting with us. Mm -hmm. The meaning of life is to know who you are. Therefore, it goes beyond the reason. The human, the human suffer Humans suffer not because they don't know who they are. How do you grow spiritually? Faith is the substance of things not seen and the evidence of things that you will see. Without faith, which is a spirit, it is impossible to please Yahweh. How do you acquire faith? Faith is a spirit. Just like Yahweh is a spirit. Love is a spirit. Shalom, joy, prosperity of the soul is a spirit. Oh, yeah. So if you want to live a life of faith, you have to live in the spirit, not in the flesh. To live by faith... You must live, and I said it again, inside out, not outside in. If you have the type of faith that is as small as a mustard seed, you can say to your trouble, you can say to those that are, that are bothering you, you can even say to your past, you can say to the mountains, be now removed and it will obey you. Rolling stones gathers no mouth. What that means is you need stability in your life. You need a foundation in your life. The spiritual world governs the natural world. And when you are rolling and you are not, you're, you're not building a family, you're not building uh, an empire. You're not building the word. I mean the word. You're not building on the Aleph You're not building on Yeshua. You're not building on the Bible. You're not building. What happens? You gather. Gathers no more. You, you. There's nothing. You. You. You have two minds. I stay. I don't stay. I go. I don't go. Let me ask you this. Why do you believe in God? Well, I don't know. Why do you believe him? Who is God? Where does he live? And how often do you visit him? Now, I'm going to ask you the same question, but instead of saying God, I am going to say Yahweh. Is that okay? What makes you believe in Yahweh? Why do you believe in Yahweh? Who is Yahweh? Where does Yahweh live? How often do you visit him? And why? What does he sound like? Why do you call Yahweh Father? And how do you know God exists? Because the last time I heard... It was the Big Bang kind of deal, and then we were like fishes, and then we became like monkeys, and then we did this. I mean, I mean, come on. How, how, is, how, how is that? On all these questions that I ask you, I can only tell you one answer. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of the Most High. When you hear His word, you hear anointing, you hear power, you hear authority, you hear something that is different. Yeshua, when He spoke, they said He speaks 
with authority, not like the scribes and the Pharisees. When we sleep, it's because the enemy, by, by sowing tares with the wheat, we become spiritually dead. Because instead of hearing the word the way it's supposed to, because a lot of ministers, a lot of churches, a lot of pastors, a lot of leaders, a lot of messianic believers, and I'm talking about leadership, they are not speaking the true word. They are mingling. Faith will not come. And Yahweh, when you don't walk by faith, Yahweh begins to give you itching ears. So you can believe a lie. Because you like better what your friend Susie Q and, and you know Fred Flintstone and Wilma are telling you. Because it sounds good. Your itching ears like what they're saying. Well, I don't go there no more. And the reason a lot of you, and I'm talking about a lot of you, a lot of us, a lot of us, we have left the church is because the anointing is not even flowing. And when there's no anointing, you don't want to go back there. When there's no anointing, there's no fire. There is no love. There is just motivation. And what happens? Something is definitely missing. Most of believers are sleeping because what they're doing, they're, practice, they're practicing Middle Eastern philosophy and bringing it to the United States of America. Because if it feels good, do it. As long as you feel good. Who cares? Faith without works is dead. Just like a body without the spirit is dead. Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. So be careful how you are walking. Which one came first, the spirit or the flesh? The spirit came first. Why? Because before, before the man became flesh, it was inside the seed of the father. The seed, the seed, it was spirit. The seed, the seed, the egg of the bounder. And then what happens is the flesh is the manifestation of the physical, to the physical world. Faith, immunah, is one of the gifts of the Spirit. Without faith, without faith, without faith, without faith, you cannot please Him. And if you don't please Him, then what is it that you're doing? To you out there, when was the last time you read the Bible? And not just read it. When did you meditate? When did you receive it? When, how often did you pray? I guarantee you, most of you, I would, if there's 10 of you, I guarantee you maybe one of you can say, you know what, I walk like that. <laughs> Listen very carefully. Why is the spiritual world more powerful than the natural world? Because it is more powerful, it is smarter, it has been around before the physical world. Yahweh created the spiritual first. He created the heavens first before he created the earth. Before you are flesh, you first are spiritual. Listen very carefully. There's more power in the things you don't see than the things you see. What is the power that's working in you? And don't tell me because your actions speak louder than words. I don't want to hear it. Your actions speak louder than words. How you live actually demonstrate how you, what kind of power you possess. Well, I believe God. And I believe this. I don't care what you say. I want to see actions. Show me how you live. Show me how you treat people. Show me the, the anointing. That's how you show me what kind of power you possess. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle, number one, against principality. We wrestle against spiritual wickedness in high places. And what, what is the armor that you're having? What is the armor that you are clothed with every day? If it is not, if you don't tell me prayer, then you know what? Then something's missing. 
When you wake up in the morning, do you seek him or do you turn that or do you turn the cell on first? What is the first thing that you turn on? Let's get it on. Let's turn it on. What is the first thing you turn on? Is it that yourself because you want to see who called you or or how many messages, stupid messages you have? Because that's what it is. You're so eager to find out if Susie Q, if, if Fred Flintstone, if you, if, if Mr. Peabody called you and left you a message. Oh, yeah. Or Bull Weekle. Huh? If you got a like on Facebook. Yeah. Or if you don't like us on Facebook. No. Or you got a like. Or do you have a like in Facebook, right? A like. A like to Facebook? And, oh, thank you for bringing that up. Thank you, sister, for bringing that up. I thank you. To all of you, everybody, I thank you for giving me thumbs up. But let me tell you, and I told my husband, don't these people know how to talk? Don't they know how to write? I feel like a gladiator. I feel like I'm in the arena of a gladiator. When you put the thumbs up, and I understand why you're doing it, because, see, we mimic what we see. But I want to hear from you. Don't give me no more thumbs up. Give me what you think about what I send you. Whether it's negative, whether it's a comment, I don't care for it, don't send it no more, this and that, I love it, this and that. Why don't you send me this? But yeah, you send me a thumbs up. And sometimes you send a little one or you send me a big one. I am not a gladiator. I am not in a, in a Roman arena. And I want to hear from you. Is that hard to ask? Somehow, uh, being consistent, doing the same thing over and over, it's like a chant. So, you, the, what are you talking about? I'm talking about personal relationship with uh, Yahweh or with Yeshua. Okay. The, the personal relationship. Everybody can have a personal relationship. Right, right. What I'm saying is, if you keep, if you say the same thing over and over again, like say you say the Our Father over and Every day you say that is is that a is that enough or do you want to have just a regular conversation with him? A, a regular conversation. Okay. Okay. You you have a regular All conversation. Right. Listen very carefully. Ignite the gift that is inside of you. Your gift is not outside of you. You need to awaken that genie. Of the lamp. Mm -hmm. And this is a metaphor. Please, I'm not saying that now you're going to go voodoo. And, Ooh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. It's just a metaphor, symbolically speaking. Okay? You, inside of you, there's a genie. It's a giant. And it's the Ruach HaKadosh. Awaken the genie of the lamp. Awaken your miracle. Awaken the fountain of life. Awaken your prosperity. Awaken the healing. Awaken the Ruach HaKadosh. Awaken life inside of you because Yahweh is the only God that lives and he is the God of the living, not of the dead. Revival is here. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Stop. Stop allowing the enemy to withdraw from your life account spiritual bankruptcy, which makes you poor in the spirit. Revival does not start with anybody. It starts with you. With one person who has fire of Yahweh, then, like a chain reaction, it spreads because fire spreads. Revival spreads, spreads. Without a doubt, I know the Messiah is coming back. You can have much of the Torah. You can read a lot of the Bible. You can have all the wisdom. Hallelujah. And if you don't have the spirit of Yahweh, you are dead. Spiritually dead. You have no idea 
When, when, when a believer says, well, the Bible says, and I know how they live. I don't say anything. I said, oh, yeah, okay, that's nice. I see it in their life. I see it. Callate la boca. By all that getting, get understanding. The only thing that's going to revive you really is the, is the spirit of Yahweh. That's the truth. And, the, and what, is, what is revival? When you have revival in you, whatever is lacking, you will get. The very first thing that comes is repentance. If you need healing, it will give you healing. If you need deliverance, it will give you deliverance. Hallelujah. You will want to read the Bible more. You, 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 you have this desire and it's, you, you begin to read it and then you, you begin to cry. Because now revival means that you have been revived from the dead. You have been resurrected to new beginnings. You have came from the dead. Now you're in strength. You radiate, you have energy, you have life, you have zeal, you have spirit, you have passion, you have a force, you have physical health, you're, you have mental energy, you have power. And with this I leave. <laughs> Yeshua is coming back. You have the power. Ignite the gift that is inside of you. Because the tribe, I'm sorry, from the lion, from the tribe of Judah, is with you. The lion is the king of the jungle. Yeshua is the king of Israel. King of the universe. He is the lion from the tribe of Judah. Salvation is of the Jews. The shofar, the trumpet, is about to sound. Ignite his fire inside of you. Awaken the fire of the Ruach HaKadosh. And I wake up, and wake up, you sluggers, stiff-necked, rebellious children. Your Redeemer is coming in the clouds with the thousands of his army angels. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm. Why? Because the day of Yahweh's judge, judgment, tribulation over the earth is coming soon. Yahweh is not telling men, telling man to come to heaven, but rather for men to bring heaven to come to earth. Your kingdom come, your, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Your kingdom come means the earth millenniums. Your will is his commandment, his feast, his Shabbat. Be done. Don't be a hearer of the word, but also a doer. And earth as it is in heaven, even angels do the Yahweh's commandments. Let your will, commandments, feast, Shabbat, be done on earth as it is in done. Even the angels do it in heaven. You can find this in Psalms 104, 20. It says, Blessed Yahweh for his angels that excel in strength, that do his, Yahweh's commandments, and hear the Shema, voice of Yahweh, his word, hallelujah. The fallen angels here on earth did not obey the will of Yahweh. They are on earth going to and from seeking who they may devour. I'm asking you the following question. And this is for you. This is what I should be studying, giving you, and I can't because you're not ready. Let me ask you the question. What is the plan of Elohim for creation? What is the 7,000 7, year plan of Elohim? What is, what is Yahweh restoring? Why, I'm sorry, what is restoring? Why is Yahweh restoring the two houses of Israel? Why? Who is Ephraim and who is Judah? What is the end of the 6,000 years? What is replacement theology? What is the resurrection of Lazarus? What does it mean, I am the first and the last, the olive and the top? What does the birth of Jacob represent? Why three and a half years of tribulation? What is Yahweh's covenant for Israel? What is going from grace to grace means? Now, if you answer, I don't know, then where is his grace? Undeserved favor in your life to understand the scriptures. Where is it? Many constantly are saying, I am saved by grace. This is the age of grace. I am blessed and highly favored. Mm -hmm. You are speaking grace from your mouth, mm -hmm. but not understand grace knowledge in your heart. Mm -hmm. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I will also reject you that you shall be no priest to me. 
Seeing that you have forgotten my commandments of your Elohim, I will also forget your children. Hosea 4, 6. Let me, let me break it down. Let me break this verse to you. Who is Yahweh referring to, my people? It cannot be Jews or Judah. Because Jews, the house of Judah, are very acknowledgeable of Yahweh's laws. As a matter of fact, Jews, the house of Judah, is the only nation in the world that has kept Yahweh's commandments, Shabbats and feasts, and are very wise, even though they have not accepted Yeshua, but they will when Yeshua comes back. Why? Because they have the knowledge of the Most High. And when we reject His commandments, just like Adam, we are rejecting His knowledge of the Divine Torah or Divine Instructions. Divine Torah or Torah instruction teaching means it is hidden treasures. It is truth and it's lights. The entrance of your word gives light. In Proverbs it says, for your commandments is a lamp and the Torah or the word is a light. The Torah was received by Israel, which is a mixed multitude, as a covenant by Yahweh, the Torah is the will of Yahweh to be done on earth as it is done, as it is done in heaven. Why is, it, why is his will be done on earth? Why? Because Messiah is going to be teaching the Torah to all nations from Jerusalem in the millennium. This is in Isaiah chapter 2 verse 3. Please let's go there very quickly. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 3. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3. See, this is what I should be teaching you. Not that. And it says here, on verse 3, And many people shall go and say, Come ye, let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of Elohim of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. This is in the millennium. Okay? Okay. The law of Yahweh is not, is not done away with. It says in Hosea, please come and come, let's go. Now I'm going to teach you a little bit, very quickly. In Hosea chapter 12, and I'm sorry if I said I, this is my end. In Hosea chapter, this is after Daniel. Hosea chapter 12, verse number 1. Look at, look at, look at what Hosea is saying to the people. 12.1 Ephraim feeded on the wind and followed after the east wind and he daily increased lies and desolation and they do make a covenant with the Assyrians and oil carry in Egypt. Now, what does this mean? Ephraim Christianity, this is where Hosea, I see, this is why you have to know what the names mean. The house of Israel is getting fed on the wind and lies of, of prophets, of, of prophets, they lie. And, and, and actually, people are saying to them, hooray, hooray. Israel, his children, are defiled. And it says here that his people are unworthy of um, um, worshiping him. Right there, Hosea 5.3. I know Ephraim and Israel is not hid from me. For now, O Ephraim, thou committest whoredom, and Israel is defiled. It's both Many are saying that the laws are done away with. Yeshua says, I did not come to destroy the law. I come to fulfill it. So what Yahweh has done, he has carried us away, away, just like the prodigal son, okay, to pagan nations. And we learn pagan nations even as of today. And I can bring you this next week, but I'm not going to, I'm just giving you. What Yahweh is doing in these last days, he's restoring his house. He's restoring his people that have been paganized in the world. Pagan feasts, pagan holidays, 
pagan food, pagan pig. This is where the prodigal comes in. Walking by faith requires that we tune our hearts to the voice of the Holy Spirit. In the truth of his word, we choose to live according to what Elohim reveals to us rather than trust our own understanding. I wrote this this week. Mm -hmm. Not this, not the message. This is my, 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 I wrote it. I was crying when I wrote this. I really, I was crying. And that's where I make the tree. Where I study, I have a, I have a, I have a, a desk. It's like this size. I have, I'm by my window and, and outside the window there's a big tree. And the tree really looks like this. Like this. It, it, it's big but it goes on the side. You know, like, like, I drew it the best I could. Okay, if you want to see, you see, can you see here? Okay, the tree. This, this, I drew this. This is, I see this tree outside my window when, I am, when I'm studying. So anyway, I began to cry this week because I'm human. I'm very human and just like you, you know, we go through a lot of things in life, but I didn't cry because of that. Even though, you know, I'm very busy, my, my daughter has moved, a lot of things. Mm -hmm. We're helping her and so on and so on. So anyway, I sat there and I began to cry and I just, I said, I'm looking at the tree. This, I do this all the time. Not crying, but I'm looking at the tree. And I said, I don't understand. You have given me so much knowledge to bring to your people. And I'm, I'm seeing what your, your children and my, my, my brothers and sisters are doing with your word. And I know that this is none of my business, but I want to say it because it hurts me. So I began to cry and I said, I really don't want to do this anymore. Because none of you, inside and outside and none of you, know how I live my life. How, what I have to do to bring this. You have no idea. And it's not that I don't want to do it. Because I do want to do it. I have passion to, to bring this truth. I love what I do. I love. But it hurts me to see the body of Messiah, what, what we're doing, what you are doing, what we're doing to each other. Instead of learning from each other, what he has given us. We speak evil against each other. And then we walk away from his truth. We start mingling with things of the world. How can something so good now be so bad? So then anyway, I start crying and this is, this is what I wrote. This is, this is exactly what I, this is what he gave me. And he said, the most high gives us a choice to live our lives on earth the way we want to. Choosing to see or choosing to hear and choosing the way we want to live is a birthright. That is the only thing he has given us. Choosing. He really doesn't or will not choose for us. We choose for ourselves. Everything is set before us, including fear. Look now at your surroundings. What do you see? Then I begin looking at the tree that I showed you. And literally, my mind goes, and I look at the tree, and it's, I feel that instead of the tree, is Yahweh speaking to me. I see in that tree, I see opportunities. This is me. I see a right side and I see a left side. I see east and west, light and darkness, because underneath the, the tree there's, there's shade, there's dark. I see future, my future, what I want and what I don't, what I don't want. Because this tree, and I see my potentials, and I see your potentials. I see blessings and happiness. I see health. I see shalom. I see living my dreams. 
and I see courage. I see this beautiful tree just staring at me with thousands and thousands of small leaves. And it's saying to me, look at me. The tree is facing north and south. The branches are spread east and west. He's saying through that tree, <laughs> my wisdom, it's going to be Yahweh, Yahweh's wisdom, Yahweh's anointing, Yahweh's power is everywhere, including in trees. And he's telling me because I'm crying for you. And he's speaking me through this tree. I mean, don't, don't think I'm not, or I need some kind of looney tune, be putting looney tune or anything like that. That's just a metaphor, okay? And he's speaking to me, and he says, you see this tree? Mm -hmm. This tree that you see right before you has gone through Hurricane Irma. Mm -hmm. Heavy storms. Dry season. It's lost its leaves. It's gone through heat days of summers. It's, it's gone through nature's abuse. It's gone through neglect and rain. This tree is me. The leaves are the potential that I give you. The opportunities, the courage, the blessing, the, hap the happiness. The tree of life. And he's saying, and this is me, this is, this is me. I'm talking to him. Sometimes when I get frustrated, I want to see in people, and I look out the window and see the quiet, that they look, you know, that they don't have a, in other words, I look at this tree that doesn't have a care in the world. The air is moving softly. The leaves are begging to talk to me. I mean, I know that sounds far-fetched. But in reality, what do we get from a tree? From a tree, we build houses, tables. We get money. We get warmth because we go under. We get safety. We get protection. We get strength. We get blessings. We get food. Our, our potential, our beauty, our wisdom, gentleness. And in the trees, birds, animals, and humans, they, re they rest. Look at Tarzan. We're speaking. Me and Yahweh, me and the Ruach Adesha are speaking. And now he's saying, when you look at that tree, <coughs> you should see yourself. When you look at a tree, how do you see yourself during the four seasons? You want to see what he gives me? Accept and change. Before I give you this, he says, you see that tree? Where I live, we live in the country. They're, they're surrounded by a lot of trees and a lot of nature. That tree has no buddies next to them. Because that tree is unique. Other, other trees, and is, they're my children, but this tree that you're looking at is me, is yourself. And if you look at that tree, it's different from others. How, and this is my question to you, how do you see yourself as a tree during the four seasons? <laughs> this is what I get, this is, this is, he, he gave me this, and this is how I told him. Fall. When I think of myself as a tree, I think of autumn or fall. I'm shedding the, I'm shedding the leaves, which means of the experience I had had in the summer. The colorful leaves are the different things I have learned. 
What about winter? Winter comes. I am completely bare. I don't have any leaves. I'm completely bare. This is a time of death. This is when I die. Not physically. In the flesh. This is when I'm cold and empty. And feel. And have a feeling when everybody has abandoned me. Hmm. Winter is a spirit. It's a, it's a period of coldness. Of misery. Of death. Of dying of self. Now comes spring. Spring. I see that I bloom again. Because the rain is making me bloom. The rain is himself. The rain, hallelujah, means new. I mean, spring means new beginning, new hope, new life. And what is summer? Summer is enjoying the energy, the happiness, the blessing of what I receive in the spring. He took me and he says, you are that tree. No matter what they're doing, no matter what they say, don't worry about it. Because I am with you. And every tear that you have shed, I have it in a bottle. I, 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 bent, I, I bow down and I started praying and I think, thank you, Father. For giving me wisdom, for giving me joy. But mostly, thank you, Father, for giving me your life. And your mark. With the spirit of Yahweh in you, get set with faith. Grow spiritually. Shalom Aleichem. What have you learned today?